a lot of reasons why um, I, I wanted to join the program in the first place. One of them being my passion in medicine. Another reason why is I felt like I could really give back to a patient very directly. Being like a medical student right now, a lot of times I can feel helpless, and this is a, definitely a great way that I could that I feel like I can really directly help a patient. I registered for Be The Match the first time at the University of Texas at Austin where I attended college. And then again, I signed up at medical school. We, we helped drive. I signed up there as well. I listened to this voicemail and it was like, hey, we wanted to let you know that you're a potential match for a patient. The feeling of action came over me, a feeling of like just pure excitement and joy. And it was one of the better moments that I can recall in my life. I was very excited that Ian got called to donate. As a parent, watching him go through that experience was terrific. It's critically important that we have people that are willing to donate not only bone marrow, but cells that come from the bone marrow. We often collect them from the peripheral blood because it really is the gift of life. Young men are the best donors because of some of the immunological consequences that happen after the transplant, and so their stem cells will engraft and function better more often in the recipients. Ian is sort of the perfect demographic for that donor. It was absolutely because of my relationship in Sarah Cannon and our relationship with Sarah Cannon be the match in this event that caused him initially to sign up. One of the terrific things that the Be The Match does, they have a wonderful educational program. They did a great job of helping him understand what the expectations were from him, the importance of uh, being able to follow through with the, the additional visits, and then once committing to donate, to make sure that that donation did occur. People should know when they go through this that they're gonna have access to a lot of information. They're gonna be given the opportunity to question and probe and understand uh, what it means to them and to the patient. The injections that I had before my procedure beefs up your blood cells. It actually potentiates the growth of uh, um, stem cells so they can be harvested for the patient forward. As far as shots go, I mean, they didn't hurt. Well, I could do them myself and I didn't have to come into the blood center. That they'll be taking the blood out of my arm into the centrifuge machine and the blood will actually apherese and it'll spin really fast and separate cells by weight. And when it does that, it'll, it'll filter out the, the cells that they want to donate to the patients. The rest of the blood will actually end up pulling back into my arm here, um, so I actually won't be losing any blood. No pain involved. Like right now, I, I feel just as I would if I was on the couch watching TV. After doing the injections and after having, you know, shots uh, in childhood and throughout my life, uh, this has been a very painless experience. My biggest hope for Ian's story really revolves around the recipient. The biggest hope is that this is going to turn out to be a success. To know that I have an opportunity to help treat somebody's disease and give the gift of life, I mean, that, that's an amazing feeling and something that I wouldn't trade for the world. The phrasing, giving a gift, I mean, I'm not sure if I feel like I'm giving a gift, but rather I feel like it's more of a, like a duty. You get called and you answer that call. 